Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zersher and today I'm going to be exploring circle number 54. I'm starting to rethink my whole numbering these circles because as you know, any of you who've been following along, I'm really not doing Sue's designs. She'll be taking hers down because she is going to be creating a pattern that people can purchase after the 90 days are over. And as a result of that, I started doing my own design so that I wouldn't have to take my circles down. But it doesn't really seem right to be using her hashtag when in fact these aren't her designs and I'm just using a one inch circle to kind of explore the creative process and doing my own thing while using all of her beautiful threads and tools and all the lovely things that she carries. So I'm not going to continue adding that hashtag, but I will continue exploring the design process on a one inch circle because it's a fun little exercise and it allows me to explore all the stitches in her book as well as some others like the feather stitch which I used on a circle yesterday and most of the stitches that I use are from Sue Spargo's creative stitching book but every now and then someone says oh can you demonstrate this stitch and it won't be in her book and so I'll demonstrate that or I'll find that I make a variation of my own on a stitch. And so then it becomes something that I've not seen in any books. And it's my own variation on something like my variation on the whipped woven circle, which is a variation that I really love and I came up with. In any case, these videos are really about exploring the creative process. I have a playlist called Exploring the Creative Process aka Gone Rogue, and I'm going to continue posting these videos within that playlist. If you haven't done so already, I would love for you to come along with me on my blog where art and life meet. The link is down below in the description section where I blog about things that I think about. I keep it pretty light for the most part and I'd love for you to come along with me. I'm also on Instagram. It's at and then my name as well as my Facebook page which is Ariane Zersher Designs and where I also post links to all of these videos. So if you're on any of the social media and want to come along with me, do. That would be great. Don't forget to hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button. A little bell will pop up. Hit that for email notifications. Talk to me. I love hearing from you. So leave me comments in the comment section and don't forget to check out the description section. It's where I leave a lot of links. Also links to every single tool and thread that I use so that you can click on that link. It will take you directly to that item. Grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's explore. I thought I would do the loop stitch uh, and see what that looked like for the outside of the circle. I did an in-depth video on the loop stitch, and I'm going to post the link for that in the upper right-hand corner. I'm using a number five weight. This is EZM07, and I'm going to just see how it looks around this circle. I'm going to keep my legs fairly long because they do tend to disappear if I don't. I'm going to have to have them closer together on the inner part of the circle and farther apart on the outer part of the circle. And I want my little loop here to follow the edge of the circle. So I'm keeping that in mind as I stitch.
As I go around here, I'm just keeping in mind that I want this to follow the edge of my circle. So I'm tweaking it when I see that it's not. And I'm also keeping in mind the length of the legs of this stitch. I'm keeping the outer legs quite a bit longer than the inner legs, and I'm doing that on purpose. I want those outer legs to be more exaggeratedly emanating out. And then I'm going to go ahead and end my thread here. I like the way that looks for the most part. I've drawn a chalk circle. I'm going to do a trellis stitch around. I'm using number five EZM 105. So I do, I start with my back stitch. I'm making my back stitches fairly small. going around and trying to make sure that the stitches are pretty even. All right, so this is where I'm going to end my thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to the right here, but I'm going to go down into the wool and I'm going to pull that thread until it's just like that. I'm bringing my new thread right up here. This is the old one. This is the new one. And now I'm going to continue along. starting to pull my threads much tighter and I'm even skipping a thread so I just skipped one there. So now I'm starting to really pull quite hard on the thread because my circle's getting smaller. So I'm going to decrease again here.
So that's going to be my final stitch. There's really nowhere else for me to go. So I anchor it by just pulling straight down. I almost tore this trellis stitch out because I thought, mm, I'm not sure. And then I thought, you know, let me try to work with this instead. So I'm using a silk ribbon and I'm going to come up under here and I'm going to thread under this loop stitch my silk ribbon and see what that looks like. It gives it just a little color under here. And then as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should have skipped and done every other loop. That could have been cool. I like it where it's showing up here. That's cool. This whole part, but then it gets lost over here. I think maybe, okay, so I liked it, but um, I went again and I did it every other to give it a little more prominence. And I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead now and do something here. Not sure what. I'm doing a little needle bar using my Dazzle. This is a number 5107. And I'm doing a tiny little needle bar every third spoke, keeping them really close together. This should be a number 24 chenille. And uh, I thought I was doing a wrap, so it's on a number three Milner's, but, but I should be using a 24 chenille. And I'll switch to a 24 chenille the minute I finish this needle bar. Okay. I'm doing a little seven wrap bouillon in this silken pearl. Can't remember what the color is, but it's that magenta. It's the magenta one. the Silk and Pearl Summer Blossom. And a number three Milner's. So there's my circle. I have my, I started with my loop stitch going around and then I did my trellis and then I wove my silk ribbon, couched it under the loop every other. Then I did my needle bar weave in my dazzle thread Using Silk and Pearl, I did little French knots. And there we are. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Don't forget to hit the like button. Click on that subscribe button. Then there's a bell that pops up for email notifications. Click on that. Leave me comments in the comments section. I love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out the description section where I leave links for all the different threads that I've used in this circle and a lot of other information that you might find interesting. Until next time, here's to exploring together. <laughs>